This week on IUP News Center, the infamous Eric Freen has been captured. Also, police are still searching for suspects who set a couch aflame last Wednesday. Plus, your latest updates in sports and entertainment right here on the IUP News Center. Welcome to IUP News Center. I'm Landon Hara. And I'm Bree Spitzer. Survivalist Eric Freen, charged with the ambush of police officers of the Blooming Grove State Police Barracks, has been apprehended after a 48 day manhunt. When captured by U.S. Marshals, Freen said to be unarmed but admitted to having weapons in an abandoned hangar he had been staying in. A few days after his arrest, authorities searched the hangar, finding dozens of tools needed for Freen to survive and pass the time. Police discovered many foreign guns and military supplies in Freen's hangar. He was part of a military reenactment group and played the role of a Serbian soldier. While on the hunt for him, police believe they found items he was hiding in the woods along the way, such as maps, empty packs of Serbian-style cigarettes, and ammunition. Authorities will seek to give Freen the death penalty. Homer City Borough Council members tentatively approved a tax increase of $1 million for 2015 on Tuesday, November 4th. A $1 million tax increase in the borough will raise mileage to 22.82 and increase the average property owner's taxes by about $14 per year. $1 million brings in about $8,000 for the borough. The borough's 2014 budget was about $430,000 previously. Two budgets for 2015 have been proposed, one that would hold the line on taxes and one that proposed the $1 million increase. According to borough manager Rob Nemec, Rising insurance costs and the cost of retirement for a police officer in the upcoming years contributed to the decision to raise taxes. The council decided to go with a million dollar tax increase. It's a very small increase, Nimick said. Final vote on the budget is scheduled for December 2nd. Police are still looking for the suspects that set a couch on fire on November 5th. Witnesses say that around 1 o'clock a.m. on the South 7th Street, three white college-aged males stood around a couch moments before they set it aflame. They then proceeded to walk away from the fire toward Maple Street. If anyone has any information involving this incident, please contact the police at 724-349-2121. On Wednesday, November 5th, a woman landed in the hospital after hitting an eight-foot-tall black bear on Route 119. Sherry Henry, age 37, was driving south on Route 119 when she collided with the bear. Police stated that the bear weighed between 500 and 600 pounds. After killing and hitting the bear, Henry's vehicle hit the road's median, traveling another 187 feet. Henry was taken to the Indiana Regional Medical Center later that afternoon. Henry had been treated and released. Her injuries remain unknown. University of Pittsburgh researcher Dr. Robert Ferrante was found guilty in the April 2013 murder of his wife, Dr. Autumn Klein. The verdict comes after overwhelming evidence that Ferrante laced his wife's creatine drink with a lethal level of cyanide. Ferrante had purchased cyanide using a university-issued work credit card two days prior to his wife falling ill. He argued it was for his stem cell research he was conducting for ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. The largest piece of evidence was a blood test done on his wife that revealed a lethal level of cyanide. Police also found searches on Dr. Ferrante's computer for cyanide poisoning and possible ways it can be removed from the body. With the conviction comes a mandatory life sentence used in the case of first degree murder. The death penalty will not be pursued in this particular case. Now for a short break, when we return, more news followed by a field report by Maurice and Mike. Well. I grew up, loved drawing, making movies and painting. Ever since I was nine years old, I wanted to be a comedian. Thought I had it all figured out. I always did really great in school, got really good grades. I was involved in a lot of extracurricular things. And, uh, I thought that I had it all figured out. You know, I always thought I'd make something of myself. 
and then I decided to drink and drive. Next thing I know, I was off-road going down a hill, and I'm dead. I, th I thought I had everything planned out. I thought I had it all planned out. I never thought that one decision would end my life. And then I decided to drink and drive. Until I decided to drink and drive. Until I decided to drink and drive. Until I decided to drink and drive. I thought I had it all figured out. Until I decided to drink and drive. Hello everyone, I'm Leah. And I'm Matt. And I'm Kayla, bringing you the stuff that matters around the globe. They are now the world's only space program with a smaller budget than the movie Gravity. President Obama listed potential waste sources that he plans to eliminate before the end of his presidency, which included the entire cast of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. At this point, NFL players need to stay away from all women. Seriously, come near us when you learn to respect us. I'm Eben. And I'm Brittany. And I'm Vicky. And this is your Hollywood News. New Dogs Hotel going up in smoke. No surprise there. Allegedly, Sugar Bear was spreading some honey boo boo with Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds will be expecting their first child. I mean, with all the sex appeal that Blake Lively has, it's a wonder she can't make men pregnant. Maybe he's just barren. Welcome to Advice with me, Kelly. The thing I have to tell you. If your boyfriend is being secretive, here's what we're going to do. Go to Walmart, buy a large piece of poster board and some markers, and write Pay attention to me on the poster board. That should have roughly the same effect. I hope that helps. Welcome back to the IUP News Center. Over the weekend, many IUP students showed up on the IUP Hawk Rock. On Saturday, November 8th, students gathered for a dance-a-thon from 10 o'clock a.m. until 10 o'clock p.m. that night. Over this period of time, the students raised over $6,500. The proceeds are going to the hungry and homeless people of Indiana County. On Saturday, Indiana University of Pennsylvania held its second Day of the Dead Festival. The festival was hosted by the Tlaku Honor Society, which took place in the Hub Ohio Room, followed by a parade organized by the Anthropology Club in the Oak Grove. Attendees celebrated the lives of lost loved ones with altar exhibits, music, and authentic Mexican food. During the event, there was an altar competition where campus organizations, as well, in, as well as individuals, were asked to create an altar exhibit to commemorate people in their lives that are deceased. Voting was based on two categories, which involved individual and group exhibits. IUP's Upward Bound Math and Science program won the best group altar, and Nancy Lopez won the best individual altar. UBMS had an educational theme, while Lopez built her altar in honor of her grandmother. Strategies for Ecology Education, Seeds Club, Phi Eta Sigma, and Al IUP College Democrats and Pride were all organizations that participated in the festival. IUP's Department of Food and Nutrition provided three authentic Mexican food samples. The Indiana Community Garden provided Mexican marigolds and six hand bakery baked authentic Mexican bread. Gift cards were given as prizes, which were donated by Pizza House, Cozumel, Tres Amigos, and Kim Moon. A giant eagle gift card was also given away. November 15th, IUP's Wood Center and Department of Art will be sponsoring a concert with Spiel's Snake Oil Band at 8 p.m. in Sprouse Hall McVitie Auditorium. Spiel created Cigar Box Nation. The concert celebrates Cigar Box guitar music. It is considered by many the central source of information and energy propelling a renewal of interest in handicraft instruments. The concert will be free and open to the public. Donations will be accepted to help defray costs. Parking is free here on campus at 5 p.m. For more info on this event, contact B.A. Harrington from the IUP Wood Center at 724-357-7640. Theatre by the Grove will present Fahrenheit 451 as its second production of the season at 8 p.m. A classic by Ray Bradbury focuses on the media's influence. The production will be directed by theatre professor Carrie J. Cole, who says the story has moved from fiction to facts in the years since Bradbury made the novel to later make it a play. Cole believes through this production the story is pushed into the future following the chilling logic set by the author Bradbury and American culture. General admission tickets are $15, $12 for senior citizens. For more information on the production, you can contact the Lively Arts at 
2787 or at arts at iup.edu. And now we are going to hand things over to Maurice and Mike for a field report followed by a short break. When we return, Zach's weekly sports coverage followed by, of course, more news. Next week, Dr. Michelle Papagi's public relations class had the opportunity to go to Nashville, Tennessee. There they got to meet PR professionals and got the chance to see what Nashville, Tennessee had to offer them for their future career plans. Journalism Secretary Lee Vest and Professor Dr. Michelle Bupeke, along with 12, stu 12 students, met with met IUP alumnus John Esposito. As part of Dr. Michelle Bupeke's Journalism 325 course, Entertainment PR, um, every year she teaches that, she usually takes them on a trip to, so that they're able to network with potential employees and, and uh, have professional experiences. The class also sat with the president of Dale Carnegie, Alan Walker. Well, of course, I didn't go as a student, so I have a completely different perspective. But still, you know, you're never too old to learn, and, and uh, it was very interesting seeing the, uh, the studios, the music studios, and also see the inner workings of a, a, recording, a recording studio and the inner workings of um, Time Warner. Journalism students gain valuable knowledge. I'm Maurice Daniels, and I'm back to you in the studio. Welcome back to the IUP TV News Center. I'm Zach Blevins here with, to deliver your weekly sports news. The IUP Crimson Hawks played Gannon, Golden Knights, on Saturday, November 8th. The Hawks were not playing for a playoff spot, but the Knights were, playing, were looking to gain their first division title with a win. It was a 31-21 loss to Gannon. Coach Signetti said, since I've been here, IUP had never lost a game to Gannon. We continue to shoot ourselves in the foot for whatever reason. The IUP women's basketball team played Penn State on Sunday, November 2nd at the Bryce Jordan Center in State College, Pennsylvania. Coach Tom McConnell said, I think we had 23 field goals and 20 of the 23 
were from assist, which means we were sharing the ball and looking for one another. The Hawks shot 36% overall, with 44% from the three-point range. They had only 12 turnovers, but they lost in the final minute, 75-71. to 71. IUP women's soccer team lost to East Stroudsburg 5-0 in the first round of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Women's Soccer Tournament on Tuesday, November 4th. They entered as the eighth seed with a record of 9-7-3 and, and drew the top-seeded Warriors, who are ranked fifth nationally. I'm Zach Blevins, and those are your sports. Thanks for the recap, Zach. In other news, members of the Indiana High School tennis team were honored with a banquet Tuesday night at the Indiana Country Club. The Indians finished second in their section and put together a string of upsets before falling in the WPIAL championship. They also advanced to the PIAA tournament for the first time in school history. Indiana County received state grants for memorial to Blairsville's veterans and efforts to treat acid mine drainage. The grants are funded through fees collected from operators in Pennsylvania's Marcellus Shale industry. Recently approved grants totaling $1,080,000 from the Commonwealth Financing Agency will help with building the Blairsville Memorial, Veterans Memorial Park, which will also assist two other projects that will help to reduce levels of acid mine runoff in local streams. The grant money was distributed for the Veterans Memorial Park through the Greenways, Trails, and Recreation Program, and also to the Black Legs Creek Watershed Associations of Clarksburg and the Big Run Watershed. Shale Alliance also received a grant for energy research, which is planning to create new methods and technologies to remove sulfate from mine water. In order to design the Veterans Memorial Park, the Blairsville Community Development Authority is partnering with the Committee of Local Veterans, the park, it will, the park includes a wall with memorial plaques honoring all veterans, as well as local veterans who were killed in miss, or missing in action. The park is going to be located in the area between Water Street and the southern edge of Market Street. The state funding that was approved will cover less than half of the budget calculated for the project, and efforts are still being made to fundraise. The Kip Gallery is playing host to the traveling art exhibit known as the Mountain and the Bumblebee until December 5th. Open from noon to 4 p.m. on weekends, the galley provides an opportunity to view the changing landscape of visual, written, and auditory art. Entering the main gallery, students can pick up a small booklet detailing further works by the artists showcased, as well as a map and informational summary of the entire exhibit. And now for a short break when we return, more news followed by our entertainment segment and another field report. and enjoy it twice. Restaurant portions can be large. When you start to feel full, don't hesitate to ask for a box to take home part of your meal. Then you can enjoy it a second time. For more information on making healthy food choices every day, go to eatright.org. It's one choice you won't regret. Make sure to refrigerate your leftovers as soon as possible. Welcome back to the IUP News Center. Phi Kappa Phi hosted a Concert for a Cure last Thursday in the Ohio Room of the Hub, located on IUP campus. The concert was created to spread awareness on pancreatic cancer, and tickets for the show were $2, and all proceeds went directly towards funding research. Local IUP students, bands, Wolves and Sheep's Clothing, Coastal Remedy, and William Forrest were the acts that performed, along with other live music entertainment. 
The admission ticket doubled as a raffle ticket with chances to win a multitude of different prizes. Other IUP-related organizations also donated and contributed, making this event a reality. Esposito, president and CEO of Warner Music Nashville, spoke to the journalism department on the success of proper communication. Esposito stressed the importance of passion and communication is related directly to good working relationships. John has had a number of IUP journalism majors intern at Warner Music Nashville, getting them direct connections into the business. Interns work with all things related to press releases, artist clippings, and media pitches to television stations. Esposito states that his success is all due to being passionate about the work that he does. John says that if nothing else, he hopes his students remember that point from his speech. It's like people like John Esposito that help push the students here at IUP to be successful and to be successful as he is. A public reception to kick off Season of Light will be held from 6 o'clock p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the University Museum in Sutton Hall. The Season of Light display will include traditional ethnic displays, themed trees decorated by campus and community groups, and retro toys and train sets shared by local collectors. Visitors of all ages can enjoy this exhibition from November 15th to December 13th at the University Museum in Sutton Hall. Come join Captain Montalvan as he discusses his New York bestseller, Until Tuesday, at the 6 o'clock series on November 17th at Fisher Auditorium. Montalvan and his service dog, Tuesday, will tell their story about their combat tours in Iraq and how they saved each other's lives. For more information about the 6 o'clock series, email 6 o'clock series at iup.edu. And now, here's the one and only Caitlin for your updates and entertainment news, followed by another field report. The 2014 MTV European Music Awards were held on November 9th in Glasgow, Scotland. Several familiar American artists such as Ariana Grande, Charlie XCX, U2, and Nicki Minaj took the stage on Sunday night. The ceremony didn't just celebrate American artists, though. Awards were given to artists for achievements such as Best European Acts, Best Northern American Acts, Best Latin American Acts, Best Australian and New Zealand Acts, and Best African Middle East India Act. This was the first M the MTV European Awards were held in Glasgow, and they, were, and they went over well without a hitch. Rumors were flowing about child star Macaulay Co Coughlin being found dead in his hotel room last week. Just like most of these rumors that were spread around social media, this found to be a hoax, and none better to make the announcement other than the child star himself. Coughlin took to Instagram to poke fun at the outlandish claims that were made, both this month and April of 2014 as well. Coughlin is used to being a target of these types of schemes and always finds funny ways to prove them all wrong. Well, that's all the entertainment news for this week. I'm Caitlin Himmel, and you're watching IUP TV News Center. I'm Dustin Ross here with IUP News Center. We are here at University Square to get exclusive access to their indoor saltwater pool. Oh, that's warm. This pool is actually located at 1156 Grant Street, but it's in the basement of University Square Towers. It's just steps away from Foster's. Hi, I'm Kelly Pemberton. I'm with University Square. We're hosting a um, pool party this Friday. Um, it's from 6 to 8, free food, free drinks. It's um, an indoor heated saltwater pool, so if you guys can stop down, any IUP student or friends are invited. Anyone interested in the pool party should come out this Friday, because I'll be the lifeguard. Just kidding. I'm Dustin Ross, this is IUP News Center. Thanks, Julie and Dustin. Well, that's all the time we seem to have for tonight. On behalf of IUP News Center, I am Landon Hara. And I'm Bree Spitzer. Make sure to tune in next week for more Grade A news. Good night.